Wow, what a week it's been. We gave away two Prusa Core ones this week. And then not too long ago, Joseph himself hinted on Twitter about an all new multi-tool head upgrade kit for the Core One. And then while we were at Vid Summit 2025, we live streamed with Prusa themselves. Rudolph from Prusa joined our stream and he actually told us about an all new filament that they've got coming out that they're actually sending into space. They're actually working with NASA to send this filament up into space. Something that they're gonna 3d print in space maybe or 3d print stuff here and send into space all of this stuff combined just lets us know that purse is actually working on things in the background so although you might not see fancy new printers flying out of Prusa's factories just to release a new printer so people can buy something they're actually working on things in the background and improving on their printers that they already have which honestly is a little refreshing in this day and age of 3d printer companies just coming out with all of these printer models with not a lot of change. So a lot of these 3D printer companies are doing what the cell phone companies were doing and they're just basically putting out new models with minute differences. So I actually appreciate the fact that Prusa is one of the companies that are actually reiterating on a design that they've already got out there, making it better. And did you know that you can actually take the MK4S and actually convert it to a Core 1? So they're doing things like that and those are the things that you can appreciate. So not too long ago we saw Prusa at Rapid TCT up in Detroit when we built the 11th anniversary Creality dirt bike and they sent us out the Core 1. Prior to that I haven't had Prusa products in the studio and honestly I couldn't tell you why it's just you know I had a room full of printers and I just had never bought one and I had never worked with Prusa as a brand before. So when I met Rudolph up at Rapid TCT he was absolutely awesome we talked for several minutes and before it was all said and done he was sending us a core one and honestly it's the first time that a company has sent us a printer with literally no strings attached he didn't ask for a review back he didn't ask for any type of social media posts he just said here you go check it out let us know what you think and so I've been using the core one here for several months so this isn't really a review video because there's plenty of videos out there like that and if you want to check out an in-depth review you can go on YouTube type in Prusa core one review and and have your pick. Hey, real quick, in order for us to keep all these nice giveaways going on for you guys, I need you to do something for me. Hit that like button, make sure you're subscribed, and share a video from time to time. It really helps us out. Back to the video. So really in this video, I really just wanna kinda share with you my thoughts after using the Core One for several months. So I'll share with you the things that I like about the Core One and the things that I don't like. And there's some things that I think that Prusa could probably do better. And we'll talk about those too. But first, let's talk about the new upgrade that Joseph teased on Twitter not too long ago. From the picture that he posted, it looks like he's gonna be bringing six tool heads to the Core One. And I'm not sure what style of tool heads he's gonna be bringing. And my thoughts on the multi-tool machine is that they're going to be the future of multicolor printing if you ask me. So you got the machines like the K2 Plus and the X1C and even the H2D that operate on a CFS or an AMS or maybe machines like Flashforge 85X that operates on an IFS not necessarily a CFS box style but nonetheless it's still color changes from a color box basically. Now with these new tool head machines, it's gonna change the way we do color printing all together. It's gonna save time and be a lot less waste. And for those two reasons alone, I think that the tool changer machines is about to be a standard across the board. You got Snapmaker coming out with the U1 that they're launching, and then you got Bamboo with their whole H2 lineup. They've got the H2D, which is the dual extruder, the H2S, which is the single extruder, and then they've got the H2C coming in Q4, which is the changer, the multi-tool changer. Now Bamboo is coming out with a Vortex system, which is pretty much a wireless hot end that works off induction heating. But nonetheless, all of these companies are looking into multi-tool changers, if not already coming out with them. So although I'm no longer promoting Creality products in my videos, somebody told me the other day that Creality was even talking about working on one, which any 3D printing company in the game right now should be working on a multi-tool changer. Now, whether that's an add-on for a pre-existing printer or just a new printer all the way around. So needless to say, I cannot wait for the multi-tool changer for the Core 1. I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. 
And if you already have a core one, then you're probably just as excited as I am. And if you don't have a core one and you're thinking about getting one, that's an even better reason to help you decide. If you're already on the fence, there you go. It's gonna have multi-tool heads and it's gonna be awesome. Okay, I know I said this wasn't gonna be a review video, but I'm gonna run down the basic specs of the core one real quick before I tell you about my thoughts on it after using it for a while. So the build volume on the core one is 220 by 220 by 270. And the nozzle goes up to 290 the heated chamber up to 55, and then the bed up to 120C. Now, one thing that the Core 1 is known for is the skeleton, its case, and it is absolutely super rigid. There's videos out there of Joseph himself standing on top of this printer. So one thing you don't have to worry about with this printer is durability. And thanks to the heated chamber, you're able to print a wide variety of filaments on this printer, such as ASA, ABS, different types of TPUs, and so on and so forth. And and just like any other Prusa machine, you can buy this thing pre-assembled or you can buy it as a kit and save some money. Now assembled, this printer is around $12.99, depending on where you live. And yeah, that's a little bit premium for a printer of this size and basically what it can do because it doesn't even come with a chamber camera. And I don't have one for this one. And from what I hear, the chamber camera you do get for it, even if you buy it, is not great. And that seems to be the case with a lot of 3D printers. The chamber cameras just aren't that great. But I mean, guys, we're in 2025. I don't understand two things when it comes to 3D printers. One is why you would ever put inadequate lighting inside of a 3D printer when LEDs are super cheap. And then and two, why you would cheap out on the cameras when they don't cost a lot of money. Now, one thing for the Core 1 is they didn't cheap out on the LEDs. This is one of the very few printers that I can say the LEDs are adequate inside the printer. Most printers I get, as you guys may know if you watch the channel, I always install light kits on them. I usually just create one and install it on the printer. Now, the Core 1, I didn't even think about it because the LEDs that come in this thing, they're great. So if you do install a camera, the lighting in there is adequate for time lapse and whatever you might want to do with the camera. So now that we have the basic specs out of the way, let's talk about the few things that I don't like about the Core 1 for a change. Let's start out with the bad. So one thing that I really didn't understand or care for too much was the fact that it comes with a brass nozzle. I'm not sure why they would ship a printer with a brass nozzle. Honestly, a hardened steel nozzle should just be standard across the board for any 3D printer. Now I know some people don't print material that actually requires it, but honestly, the price difference is not that much and I don't see any benefit of adding a brass nozzle. Now the other thing I didn't really care for was that it didn't come with a camera. Most printers that I get in the studio for review comes with cameras. Now I recently reviewed the 85X and it also didn't come with a camera but then it's a really cheap budget option. This isn't a cheap budget printer. This is a high quality premium option. So that's just one thing that you would kind of expect it to come with would be the camera. Now, another thing on the core one that I just personally don't love, but I've kind of grown to get past it is the plexiglass that they've used on the printer. Me personally, I would prefer glass just so I don't have to worry about it getting scratched or whatnot. But at the same time, they've used a really high quality plexiglass on this. So it looks just like glass and mine still looks good. Several months later, I just wipe it down and it looks just like glass. So I've kind of gotten over that. Now this next one isn't really a Prusa thing, it's pretty much all 3D printers and it's where the power button is located. I really wish that 3D printer companies would start putting the power button more closer to the front, not on the front, but like on the side towards the front where you can just reach it easily. Now last but not least, it's the size on the core one for me. I'm pretty sure that moving forward, Prusa is gonna be putting out printers with a little bit bigger build volumes. But when they did the Core 1, I'm just not sure why they did it so small. Now I'm sure they had some logical engineering reason as to why they thought that should be the case. And honestly, the build factor really hasn't even played a factor in anything that I printed so far. So I wish it was a little bit bigger, yes, but has it been an issue for me? No, and I don't know if it's just because I know the size and I don't throw things at it that even get close to it or if maybe I just haven't been printing big stuff here lately who knows okay now that we've got all the negative stuff out of the way let me tell you about the things that I do like about the core one and there's a lot more than the negative trust me so I've had my hands on a ton of different models and makes and brands of different types of 3d printers now when I got 
this Prusa machine. On the outside looking in, I thought this was a premium printer. But the more I got my hands on this thing, the more I started seeing it's the small things that make big differences. So, like I said earlier, this thing is absolutely rigid. It's got a super sturdy housing. Not that that would ever really play a factor because, I mean, how often are you going to stand on this thing? But it does give me just a little bit of security knowing that this thing is structurally sound. Now, when I first looked on the inside, I saw several 3D printed parts, even on the outside. I saw 3D printed parts and I didn't really care for that at first. But if you really think about it, it's actually genius. I'm sure 3D printing has allowed Prusa to make parts, one, a lot cheaper, and two, they can customize these things to no end, really. And if you look at the extruder on this thing, it's a prime example of why 3D printed parts make a lot of sense. So the core one has the Nextruder system on it, which is a direct drive, 10 to one planetary gear system, I believe. But the biggest thing to me on the extruder that stood out wasn't the way that it was built because it's super high quality. I mean, you could just look at it, open it up, and you could just tell that it's high quality. But the first thing that I noticed was this. It's got this little flip open design with dual screws that are adjustable that you can just pop it open and relieve the tension on the extruder. And I really like that whenever you get into a jam, which I've had on this machine trying to use TPU, you can just simply pop this thing open and get out of a jam, pun intended. And because I like to print a lot of different filaments, being able to adjust the tension on the extruder to me is very important. Because I've said time and time again, the tension that you use for a hard filament is never going to be the same tension that you should be using for a soft filament like TPU. But on the Core 1 extruder, they give you a way to adjust that tension, which is awesome. So I definitely tested that out on the Core 1. I've got probably almost 100 hours of printing Morphex, which is our brand new TPU that's out right now. And it did the best out of every printer in my studio with Morphex. It printed it flawlessly. And guess what? I didn't even have to tune a filament profile for it. All I did was select Flex in Prusa Slicer and it printed Morphex absolutely flawlessly. I think I had one clog at the very beginning when I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I didn't know what settings to use. And I actually had the hot end like at 240 or 250, something like that not printing but just purging and it got hung up because of heat creep but once i got everything figured out it was printing morphex tpu just like pla i mean i walked away with confidence and came back with confidence not worried about was i gonna walk into a spaghetti mess so now that i'm getting rid of pretty much all of my creality machines i think the core one is now gonna be my go-to when it comes to tpu where previously it was the k2 plus but even on the k2 plus i mean you have to mod the extruder which means swapping out the spring for one that's not as stiff and adding a spring stop i mean you had to do all this stuff just to print tpu and then you had to print a top spool holder for the k2 plus and you don't have to do any of that on the core one i printed tpu right here from the side spool and all i did was adjust the tension on the extruder and i was off printing now another thing that i really like and it's not really a core one thing it's more of a prusa thing is the new feature that they've had for the last month or so easy print is a feature that's on the printables app that you can basically just go on the app find a model that you want to print and select easy print and it'll send it directly to your printer using Prusa Connect. So yeah, there are other printer brands that have a similar feature, and I think other brands are gonna be moving towards this type of thing, but I really like the fact that Prusa is already on top of it. That's great. Now, one thing about Easy Print that's pretty much different from, let's say, Bamboo, for example, on the Bamboo app, if you hit prepare to print, it basically does everything for you in the background and you don't have any control over what happens. You're just basically using somebody else's preloaded settings and hitting print. Now, with Easy Print, whenever you select it, it sends that model to a slicer. Now, whether that be on your phone or on the computer. And from there, you have several options that you can actually control, whether it be infill percent percentages, infill types, you can add supports, you can remove supports. So it gives you a lot more control over that print. Now I'm not for sure if I really love that yet or if I actually prefer if it would just load up somebody else's preset settings where all I had to do is hit print. So I'm still on the fence about that one. I do kind of like the fact that I can actually adjust support and change infill percentages because sometimes what someone else has selected it's not always what I want and sometimes it's not always what's right. So for now, I think I kind of like the way EasyPrint is set up. So moving on, another thing that I really enjoy about the Core 1 
is the quality of the prints. The Core 1 undeniably prints probably the best quality out of every printer that I've got in the studio. Now I know these printers had some issues a while back with VFAs and stuff like that that was pretty much fixed with a firmware update. So on this one right here, I haven't had any of those issues. All of my prints have been coming out absolutely beautiful. I haven't experienced any layer shift, any banding, anything like that. Now, although the screen on the Core 1 isn't some super fancy OLED display or anything, it looks great and it is touchscreen. It does have an analog knob on it, so in case you want to go the old school route, which I find myself using way more than what I thought I would. When I saw the knob, I was like, who would use that? I catch myself using it 9 out of 10. So I kind of like the fact that it has the analog knob if you want it, and it also has touchscreen. Now when I first got the printer, it beeped every time I did anything, but you can turn that off in settings just like I did because I hate the beep. So after using the Prusa Core 1 for several months, I give it an 8 out of 10. And my overall thought of the printer is, I think it's great. Any printer that can handle TPU the way that this thing does and doing it reliably with the print coming out absolutely flawless, to me, that's top notch. And to be able to do it with a preloaded profile on the printer without changing one single thing, considering I've tried doing that on pretty much every printer in my studio and they all require me to go in and change a ton of settings before it would even think about coming out looking halfway decent. Now the Core One's not perfect, just like any other 3D printer is not perfect. I've had a few jams. I've had a couple of instances where the printer just kind of needed to be reset, but they're all little minor things that you work through. And honestly, it's just part of 3D printing. Now it's when you start having common issues more often than not is when you know you have a problem. But with the Core One, this thing's been absolutely great. It's printed A1 pretty much every single time and I really enjoy using it. I didn't really care for Prusa Slicer at first, but it's kind of grown on me. And I know what you're thinking, why not just use Orca or something like that? Well, I typically like to use the brand Slicer just because they built that Slicer for their machine. And maybe that's why I don't have a lot of the issues that a lot of other people have. Like with Creality, I use Creality Print. With Prusa, I use Prusa Slicer. With Bamboo, I use their Slicer. Now that's just a preference thing for me. You can do what you like and do what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, what works good for me may not work good for you. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the Core 1. Great printer all the way around if you ask me. And we're actually in discussions with Bamboo and Prusa right now. And one of those two brands will be the replacement brand of Creality here in the studio. I'm not sure which one it'll be yet. So maybe in our next video, you might see a bunch of Prusas in the background. Or who knows, you might see a bunch of Bamboos. But one thing is for sure, Creality's out of here. And we're bringing in brands that innovate and bring new machines and are great people to deal with. So with that said, if you guys want to check out a Core 1, I'll leave a link in the description for you to go check it out. And until next time, stay ready to 3D print.